Hello, Ben and Anna. For this Sunday, I thought nothing could be more appropriate than reading one of our childhood favorites, The Devil's Other Storybook. I hope you enjoy this reading, presented by Michael Coker. The Misfortunes of Madame Organza. There was a fortune teller who wasn't good at her work. No matter who came to the door to get a fortune told, she could never think of anything but the same three. You will meet a tall, dark stranger. You will find a pot of gold. You will take a long journey. She went through the usual rigmarole with a crystal ball and chanting all in a gloomy parlor lit with one candle and even wore a turban with a big glass jewel glued to it. But of course, though this were very nice, the fortunes themselves were what mattered. And since none of them came true, it wasn't long before nobody came to her door at all. And she was forced to take in washing to keep herself going. But she kept a sign on her door saying, Fortunes by Madame Organza. Now, it happened that one dark night, a couple of burglars eased through the village with a scaffold of money stolen somewhere else. And they hid themselves in a barn, where in the morning they were discovered snoring away by a farmer. He ran off with a pitchfork, so all of a sudden they had to leave the loot behind, buried in a hay mound. They didn't dare to go back. Later in that same morning, the farmer hired a milkmaid, who, being new to the place and thinking no one to warn her, went off with her first day's wages to get her fortune told. Madame Organza put on the turban, lit the candle, murmured, and hummed for a while, hmm. and then said, You will find a pot of gold! Goody! said the woman. And tripping home, she climbed the ladder to the hay mound to have a little peace and quiet for planning what she'd do when she were rich. And of course, she sat down on the burglar's satchel and pulled it out and opened it, and there was her gold. Great handfuls of glittering coins, just as her fortune had predicted. Well, goody again, said the milkmaid. She closed up the satchel, climbed back down the ladder, and went to find the farmer. Please, she said, does this belong to you? No, said the farmer, it does not. What a very honest farmer, by the way. Oh, goody three, said the milkmaid. It's mine then, and just what Madame Ordanza said I'd find and she let the farmer peek inside at the gold. Then she went away to the city to begin a new life, and she was never heard from again. Though the farmer thought he saw her there, sometime later, rolling in a carriage, with plumes in her hat and a little white dog on her lap. At least it wasn't one of those chihuahua things coming out of her purse. Oh. But in the meantime, her story spread all over the village, and such a noise was made down in hell, the devil perked up his ears and said, What's all the hubbubaloo? And he found out what had happened. He smiled a big smile. And straightway went up into the world to see if he could cause a little extra trouble. For he had guessed that Madame Organza's business would take a turn for the better. This was indeed the case. The line of people waiting to get their fortunes told told stretched clear to the river and halfway back with everyone so excited that everything else was forgotten. Cows were left unmilked. Pigs left unslopped. And bread set so long in the ovens that it burnt away to cinders. And Madame Organza, believing herself that she had somehow found the knack at last, was telling fortunes at a great rate. But her fortunes were only the same three as before. During the days that followed, thanks to the devil's interference, the village changed completely. Twenty-two found pots of gold and went to live in the city. But they soon found that dismal to the utmost 
but we're too proud to say so. Another 37 went off on long journeys, ending up in such spots as Borneo and Peru with no way to get back. So they were forced for a living to chop bamboo or keep herds of llamas. And all the rest met with tall, dark strangers who hung about, getting in the way and looking altogether so alarming within their black hats and their cloaks and their long beards that the villagers remaining were afraid to stay and hurried to move in with relatives and other villages caused no end of bad feelings. At last there was no one left but Madame Organza and the strangers. And since the strangers had the orphan cows and pigs to care for and didn't want their fortunes told, Madame Organza put her sign away forever. From that day forth she took in the strangers washing, all of which was black, and made the best of it she could without complaining and she put her crystal ball in the garden where it showed to great advantage out among the pansies where the sun was shining. And those are the fortunes of Madame Morganza. So I hope you enjoyed this week's video. I thought I would leave one parting phrase with you today. While I was helping out with the sacrament at church today, I stopped at the very last row, and you cannot imagine, to my dismay, the girl in the end was wearing oh, vanilla perfume. I hate vanilla perfume. Oh, God, God. It's the most disgusting smell ever. It's good in cookies. It's good in ice cream. Vanilla is not a smell for people. So the moral of this story is don't go to fortune tellers and for heaven's sakes, never wear vanilla perfume. The end. <laughs>